Hi guys, in just a second, I'm gonna be introducing Janet Fitch. And um, in case you don't know who she is, her first novel was called White Oleander. And that was a, an Oprah Winfrey book club pick. And I'm gonna to talk to her about that and what it was like to be a pick by Oprah. Um, I'm also gonna be talking with her about her newest book called The Revolution of Marina M. And that came out in November. Um, I have so much to talk to her about and so little time, but uh, um, anyway, here is Janet. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be talking to author Janet Fitch today. And we're going to be talking about her brand new book that's only two months old called The Revolution of Marina M. And she has it right there with her. She's going to show us that beautiful cover. Uh, look at that cover. <laughs> It's so beautiful. But I have to tell you that um, in case none of you remember, Janet was an Oprah book club winner back in the day, back in like 2002 for White Oleander. And um, I love, I mean, I have to say that Oprah is the reason I do this because I that's what I used to watch all the time, except for readers like me, we're like a book a month. I need like a book a day or a book a week or I was always reading. Oh, that's, that's my kind of reader. Do you want to see my Oprah book? Do you want to see it? Absolutely. When you have an Oprah book, they give you a special edition. <gasps> oh my goodness. <gasps> that and is it's beautiful. All, that is book club. The <gasps> first uh, 20 you were I was going to ask you that because I didn't know when she started it so I wanted to ask you which number you were in her pick <gasps> that's her when she wrote to me I don't know if you can read it or if it's reversed I know I can read it perfectly that is beautiful Janet isn't that beautiful and you so know what I, my souvenir copy and I was I was the 24th selection that is amazing. And I, you know, because I, I just got done actually talking to a woman who it was her debut novel. And I was thinking, I wanted to ask you for all those people that I talked to that it's their debut novel. What does it feel like to get picked? It feels like you've been knocked out of your body. Um, when I, you know how, um, when you go through a door and you don't gauge it quite right and you you hit your, your shoulder yes. on the door jam. Yes. I was like that for a month. I was black and blue from head to toe. I was dropping things. I was um, just, thing, you know, it's like getting hit by lightning. And things like this don't don't happen, especially to, in my experience, I was somebody who, if I work this hard, then I got this. And if I work this hard, I got this. I was somebody right. who just always... Um, I wasn't a, didn't consider myself a lucky person. I was a, not an unlucky person, but somebody who just, uh, what I got was equal to how hard I worked and how much I was learning. So to have something come in from left field that, um, was so, so good. So incredible. I, I wasn't prepared for it. It just knocked me off my feet. Did you find out from them or your publisher? Well, I was, um, I found out from them, but it was, it was, I knew something was up because my publisher was, had been looking for me. Um, and why would he be looking for me? You know, that was, weird. <laughs> um, and just to chat, it's like, what? <laughs> um, and I was at work, and I got a call, and could you hold for Oprah Winfrey? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of people had no, you know, did not, did not believe that it was her, thought it was a crank, you know, would think it was a crank call. But because of my editor looking for me, I had some idea something was up, but of course I couldn't have pictured that. I mean, in the world of lotteries for an author, back in that day, during that time, I remember it was winning the lottery because your book goes for, you know, from 
you know, wherever it was on the list to number one overnight. As soon as she says it, I remember, I remember she would say what the book of the month was and I was at Barnes and Noble. Like, and it was right there. Like, they already had it. It's because as soon as she says it, it's instantly number one. Like, it, it's it's yeah. a crazy, and not just like a little number, like a crazy, because it's the whole country, all these readers. It was it was a crazy time. It really I was. I remember seeing uh, Wally Lamb's book up by the, yes. uh, come and done up by the cash register of the bookstore that I go to. And I had read that book years before. Right. In, a little mass market paperback, the little tiny ones. You know, I, I asked the bookseller, um, you know, what happened to him? Did he die and go to heaven? <laughs> and, and they said, oh, no, he was a an Oprah book club pick. And I'm not a big TV person, so I didn't even know that there was a book club. Um, so that was pretty exciting for me uh, to get that call. Uh, I just I couldn't wait to ask you that question because I you know I knew that it was it had to be an extreme like one of those moments you know. <laughs> and after last night at the Golden Globes, we're all thinking about Oprah. And we are uh, all thinking. My son called me today and said, "Is Oprah running for president?" I was like, "Maybe, maybe." <laughs> yeah. And then, okay, so what I did, and then we're going to talk about Marina because I can't wait to dive, you know, dive into her. But one more thing that I wanted to tell you is that back then, you know, 2002, uh, the movie came. So then the movie gets made, right? And there are all these stars in the movie. And I, I didn't really remember. So I had to rewatch it this weekend because I was like, I, I knew it was an awesome movie. And I have to say that 99% of the time that you go to the movies when you've read the book, you are highly disappointed. But I do it every time anyway because I'm a reader and I, I want to see what they did with it. But I have to say with White Oleander, I did not feel that way. Michelle Pfeiffer was amazing in that movie. And I wanted to see what you thought because as the author. I mean, of course, there were great. things that were missed, but... I have to say, it was a pretty good book to movie. Yeah. I'd, I've had really good luck. You know, the uh, the White Oleander movie was fantastic, and the movie that was made from uh, my second book, from Painted I Black, is out now. Streaming. I... When did it come it. out? It's uh, this this year. Oh, this year. Okay. This year. It came out in April, and um, it's now streaming everywhere you know, Apple and Amazon and Net it's not on Netflix yet, but it's on everybody else. And it is incredible too. I so, can't wait to watch it. Maybe, maybe Marina will be picked up. I, well. I wouldn't, I, this is my wish that Marina gets picked up for a mini series. Well, I think that the mini series, we're in the golden age of the we mini series. Are. We are. And they are call them that they call them limited series you know i have to get over calling them many series i was told um but it i think the 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 limited series the mini series is i mean that's more of a not it's a more novelistic right um see if you ever see war and peace the, there's been many movies made from the book but yes. for some reason the, the mini series versions of them versions of it are always better because it is more like chapters. Yeah, you know, it makes more sense. Yeah, especially so, a big, big book like this. Yeah, there's no way they could do it in a movie. So I'm not even going to say movie because I just don't think a two hour, three hour movie is going to make it. It's got to be a mini series. So <laughs> we'll just put that in, into the universe, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's and, available. Right. And um, okay, so what you know, like just from rewatching White Oleander and then going to Marina, and I was like. <laughs> You, you take such these women, okay? And it's like, first of all, when you wrote White Oleander, the name Astrid became one, because I was having babies at that time. <laughs> so I have six children. And you took that name and made it like the number one baby name, okay? So I'm waiting oh, for Marina to become that, this number one baby name. <laughs> wow. No, well, you be interesting I, i'll keep an eye for it definitely because i like i said i was the one reading baby name books at that time and you know it just that's what happens but um so you know to, to get into i am a huge <laughs> i, I want to say i'm a huge russian revolution fan i've read a lot of books on the romanovs and the russian revolution and but world war one I, I was asking somebody who um 
my boyfriend who's really into history, I said to him, why do you see so many Russian Revolution and World War II historical fictions, but not a lot of them dive into World War I? And he said, because it was so sad. Do you feel that way? I think that there have been genius books written about World War One. All Quiet on the Western Front. I mean, and he mentioned that one. <laughs> and it's funny that you said that because he did mention that. Books had um, films made about World War One. Um, I think that World War Two. There had been more people recently who had been involved with it. I think World War Two changed America. Right. Uh, in ways that World War I did not. We were only in it for a year. Um, but World War I changed the world in a way World War II did not. Right. World War I changed the world. There, the reason there was a second war was right. because of the first war. Uh, the reason there was a revolution in Russia was because of the First World War or right. one of the... Uh, it was set up for it, but the the um, the deciding blow was that war. Yeah, and so I saw that you just love Russian history, so it made sense as to why you would take on this is a huge undertaking of research. Um, it's a it's a huge book, and I I'm always saying like I love 350 page books because I because of my job, because I have to read fast. But this is one of those books where you don't want to read fast. You want to just sit there and take it in and, and get involved in the story of Marina and, and enjoy the journey of her life. Um, that's, and I don't know if you're hearing that from a lot of people because a lot of readers actually will, you know, people like me, like we do enjoy a longer book that we can, you know, I think anyway, that's, that's what I, my takeaway is like, we, sometimes we don't want it to end. And this was one of those books. And the good part about it is that it doesn't have to end. Cause I hear you're writing book too. So I know that it's not going to have to end. No, it's almost done. It's uh, it'll be out next year, next spring. Right. So I uh, have to wait very long, but yeah, it's, um, if I had known that it would take me 10 years, um, I don't know if I would have started. I didn't even know but it took you, you 10 years. <laughs> that is crazy. It took, you know, because writing, I'm not a fast writer. You know, for me, four years, five years is about normal. And, but when you write historical, it's like writing two books. You have to write the history. Right. And then you have to write the fiction, the story where the history is the backdrop. Right. So it takes double the time. Well, what I enjoyed um, a lot in the beginning of it, first of all, I enjoyed, the, you know, I have a list right here. You can't see it, but I have all the list of everything that I loved about it. But I love the poetry. I loved how it opened up into the poetry because I had just interviewed an author about Pushkin. Oh, wow. So before her, never heard of him. Now all of a sudden I read your book and I'm like, and I know who that is. And you're putting poetry into this book. And I thought it was so beautiful. And I saw an interview that you had said that you kind of started out the book basically all in poetry. Yeah. I, my original idea of the book was to, uh, as a novel in verse. And the first 17 chapters were in verse. Wow. And, um, I got into some material that a scene, and I just didn't know how it would turn out. And I have more tools as a fiction writer mm -hmm. to investigate a scene. And then I was writing prose. And then every once in a while, I would get into areas that just seemed overwhelming to me. Um, and I would go back to the verse because I could describe something just in a line and really move along and then go back and revisit it and uh, move it into prose. I love how you take women's stories and make the really, I don't want to say tragic, but I can't find a better word. So maybe you can fill in a better word, but, but, <laughs> but, um, and, and make it so relatable to all of us. And I mean, you did that in white Oleander, you do that for Marina. I here she, here's this girl, 16 year old girl back in, you know, 
hundred years ago, and I could relate to what she was thinking about and what she was experiencing as that girl and how she got herself in trouble a lot and out of trouble. <laughs> and I just, you know, how you do, you know, because I'm like white oleanders in one time, but you take it hundred years ago, and I'm still relating to this girl. It, that it's incredible as a, you know, as an author to be able to do that. To write about people in the past is the most important thing to remember is people's reactions are the same. People's feelings, the basic emotions are always going to be the same. People are always in a body. So you're always asking yourself, what do they smell? What do they hear? What are they feeling physically? Um, and I put the reader in the always in the body of the character. So you do feel what they feel. Uh, when writing about people in the past, it's more what didn't they have, what didn't they know, mm -hmm. and make sure that you're not re referencing things that didn't exist. And then checking, checking, checking. You know, I at, what I do is I do my research and my writing at the same time. So it keeps me from getting led astray by like a cool story I might have come across. Mm -hmm. uh, deadly. That's in history, we call that research rapture. <laughs> you avoid I like that. rapture at all cost. So if I stay with the scene that's under my hands and I just do the research about that, then I don't get led astray by um, random fabulous stories that come my way. Uh, but you always have to check and make sure. So I talked to somebody who'd done a lot of trans translating of Russian uh, books. Uh, he did Tolstoy's um, child boyhood, uh, childhood, boyhood, youth for Penguin Classics. He's a, a major translator. And he read this and he gave me some a better picture of, say, her family and how a young woman would be treated in a family like Marina's. I had pitched her a little young, uh, that a 16-year-old girl, 17-year-old girl in the kind of family she comes from, intelligentsia family, um, would have been treated as a young lady, you know, um, not as a child. So that right. really helped me see things. So you're always checking and making sure you're getting uh, things right, especially if you're writing about uh, another country and another time. You have such a responsibility to make sure you get it right. And my editor would say, you know, oh, nobody's going to care about that. Nobody's going to care about mm. that because I late I'd be fretting about a certain area of the book. And and I it's like it doesn't matter if most right. people don't know. I know and people who are really knowledgeable would read it and I need them to go. Yep. 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 You know, she did her work. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because with historical fiction, you always want the kudos from the people who really know like that you know if a historian comes to you and says you got that dead on you're like oh, I did that's I right did. that's right <laughs> they start talking about it the subject just um without criticism of your research they might not like your character or something but right yeah. <laughs> exactly but, but they want it you want them to say okay so I I picked out my favorite quote and I have a lot I have pages I I because on Kindle in case anybody wants to know you can like underline on Kindle like they allow you to do that but I picked my favorite one to tell you and because I thought this just summed up this book and it said why did everybody want a boy to hurry up and become a man but nobody wanted a girl to become a woman as if that were the most awful thing that could befall her and I love that because I've raised boys and girls. And I swear I was protecting my girls from being a woman. I, when I read it, I was like, oh, my God, I did that. I did that and 100 years later than what she's writing about. And I thought, I don't know. How did you come up with that? Like that line is just beautiful. I don't know. I think that as a writer, just the way, the same way a poet works, is you're looking for, you're looking to take the next step. So you, you see something, you see a phenomenon, and it's up to you to, can you make a statement about it? Mm -hmm. So I think that in literature, we really try to 
move to the bigger issues. So it's not enough to observe a phenomenon uh, in your, you, you know, you observe a phenomenon. This is what's going on in the family is a struggle about this girl trying to grow up and parents trying to keep her young. Uh, but then can I make a, a larger statement about life? And right. so you're, I'm always pushing to see what it mean, what things mean. It's not enough to just see them. Not enough for me. You know, I'm, I'm always pushing for a, what does it mean? That's why we turn to literature in a serious way. Yes. We get a bigger picture of what we already see. We know these things instinctively to be true, but we want somebody to take it the next step and tell it what it, tell us what it means. Yeah. And then we can really wrap our head around it. It's to me, it's those moments in a book that you stop reading. That was one of those moments. And when you, when you hit something that hits you like in your heart and you just stop and you put the book down and you kind of let it absorb. And that's what that, that's why I picked that one because I remember really stopping and saying, oh, yes, Yes, she got that. That is exactly, you know, it resonated with me, you know. So I, I, I always like to share that, you know, so that it, I don't know. Some people pick different ones, but that was mine. So <laughs> anyway, what does, um, okay, so you're set out to write, you know, this long book. Are, do you, you said how you do it, you know, kind of together, but do you know how it's going to end? Or did you know that there was going to be a book too, like immediately? No, I didn't. Um, I just knew that her story would go on. I, I'm going to go all the way through the revolution. So I had the chronology. What I didn't understand when I started was in, a, in time of revolution, how much change, how much hmm. change week by week People, I mean, we're starting to realize how much change we can endure week by week. Um, but in a in a in a revolution, the change is is it's like every week is a month, every month is a year. Right. Um, you 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 know, there's so much so much change, and uh, I wanted to to bring her through that. I didn't. It's not a history. It's how. I'm interested in how history affects us, right. how we, how history moves through our lives um, and propels us in ways that we, you know, we couldn't, A, couldn't have imagined, and B, um, that we can read about what happens at the top. You know, what did Lenin say? What did Trotsky say? What were the fight in fighting uh, in the Communist Party and their dealings with the other parties? And um, and I'm a, I love that. I'll read that all day long. But I, as a novelist, that's not what I'm interested in. Right. As a novelist, I'm interested in how, av you know, everyday people are living in history. And we don't know what's going on at the top. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and the next day. And um, we are looking to, we're always trying to figure it out. We're always trying to project and, you know, uh, guess what's going on. We read the papers and try to read between the lines. And, uh, and just how do you keep your feet when things are changing to that, you know, to the degree that, it was back then. And it's funny, I wrote the book um, before we're going through this particular turmoil uh, in our own lives. But in reading it now, how much more uh. <laughs> it means, so, you know, it's like, oh, we're now, now I'm even recognizing this in my own life. Yes. It's not, it's not a hundred years ago. It's, it's right now. Right. And that's what's beautiful about history, too, because you can see it in perspective, you know, that's why I love history, you know, but I, and you know, right now, um, pe readers are so interested in anything about the Russian revolution. We are coming up on a hundred years of the Romanovs. We've all, we already passed the hundred years of the beginning of, was it the beginning of a revolution? Yeah. No, no, November. 
the, uh, it was uh, 1917. 19, so. 1917, right. 2017. So it's ex- it, it came out exactly on the 100th oh, anniversary. Yes. Oh, of the- beautiful. And which, how could you have known that? that? I, would have been, I would have been horrified when I started to know that it wouldn't go, go out <laughs> 10 years. But um, yeah, that was really cool. I just... The pub, I, you know, the publisher uh, and I were like, we, you know, this has to come out by the rebel, you know, by the revolution. Absolutely. So uh, Absolutely. I had to really work hard to make sure that that date, we hit that date. Well, I'm so happy you weren't ready to let her go. And I saw on Amazon, all of your readers are really happy that there is a book too, and that you weren't willing to let her go. Because a lot of times authors are like, nah, I'm on to something else, no big deal. But I'm, I'm so happy you're going to finish it to, you know, the, all the way through and get yeah. to see, you know, how that goes. So can you show us the cover one more time? Because it is beautiful. Look at that. Is. Look at that cover. Did you have a lot of say? I surprisingly did, and that's a very, very rare. I'm sure that your other authors have told you that, yes. that usually you have no say whatsoever, but they did. And my big, my big um, input was really period. Um, they had her a little bit more 30s, you know, with padded shoulders and very nipped waist and and uh, the – Fashion in the revolution was set in 1914, really, before the war. There wasn't a lot of fashion coming through after the war began. Russia was cut off from Europe. Right. And so the silhouette was much more feminine. The hair was either like a large chignon in the back or Mm -hmm. bobbed. They started bobbing their hair. They started bobbing it, yeah. Uh, So... The, the hair, you know, so I had I had comments like that, you know, the makeup had to go because they didn't wear makeup back then. The nails had to be cut because there's <laughs> no manicures during the revolution. Um, right. <laughs> so we were able to work together. It was fantastic. They really, really work with me, which awesome. I never, ever expected. Oh, well, it's beautiful. And I just want to thank you so much. This has been a dream for me as somebody that interviews authors all the time. I couldn't believe you said yes. I was so excited. I was jumping up and down. I was like, yes, I get to talk to Janet. So uh, you've made my day. And I can't wait for other people to, you know, watch this video and go ahead and read all about Marina. I love that you called it the revolution of Marina M. Perfect title. And uh, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) Bye, Janet. Hi, guys. Wasn't that amazing? Janet told such great stories about the writing of this book and about the Oprah Winfrey Book Club and how she found out about White Oleander. I love that story. Um, It it really was a dream. I told her it was a dream come true, and it really, really was. That was so much fun for me. Um, If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. And if you'd like to subscribe, I put out videos four times a week. And then I do review Friday faves and uh, Saturday summary videos. And uh, thank you so much for watching.